Hi, welcome to my channel, Jabber Time, where I do math videos from algebra to calculus and differential equations, simplified with examples. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. And once again, I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you again and again. Thank you. Let's talk about the mean value theorem, MVT in short. And to start with, we're going to start talking about Rolle's theorem. Rolle's theorem says the following. Let f be continuous on the closed interval AB and differentiable on the open interval AB with f of A is equal to f of B. Then there is at least one point C in the open interval AB such that f prime of C equals zero, which means we have a horizontal tangent somewhere. Here's a graph that explains the whole thing. Rolle's theorem, f of a, f of b are the same. You see the dashed line right here. If this is continuous and differentiable, that means the graph is going to go smooth. If it goes up, it has to go down because it ends the same level. If it goes down, it has to come back up. Same idea. So, this line right here, because they're saying f of a equals f of b, it's a horizontal line. That means we have a horizontal tangent somewhere. That means we have a max, at least a max, and at least a min. Because this is a simple graph, but it could go up and down, up and down, till at the end reaches f of b, where it's leveled with f of a. Now, when this doesn't work, here's some cases. It says continuous and differentiable, but this one here is not continuous. So we can't use Rolle's theorem. All right. It doesn't mean like we can't have a horizontal tangent. We could have like horizontal tangent and breaks down here. But this, the theorem says if it's not continuous, you're not guaranteed a horizontal tangent. In this case, it's not continuous, as you could see. And we don't have a horizontal tangent right here. No horizontal tangent line on AB. Here's another case. It's a sharp edge. We can't have a horizontal tangent on sharp edge. We talked about that in previous videos. F is not differentiable. No horizontal tangent line on AB. Now let's move on to the mean value theorem, which is uh, powerful than Rolle's theorem. You could consider Rolle's theorem a special case of the mean value theorem. Why is that? Because the mean value theorem talks about f of a and f of b are the same. Here's what the mean value theorem says. It says the following. If f is continuous on a closed interval a, b, Uh, let's move on. If f is continuous on the interval a, b and differentiable on the open interval a, b, then we have f of b minus f of a over b minus a equals f prime at some point c. What is going on right here? Through a graph, I'll explain more. This is uh, a secant slope and this is a tangent slope. Here's a graph. So f of a and f of b are not the same value, which means you have a secant line here and it has its own slope. Somewhere, doesn't have to be in the middle, you will have another line that's called tangent that will have the same slope. Why I said earlier that Rolle's theorem is a special case? Because here it doesn't say f of a equals f of b. But what about if you bring this down here? That's going to be a horizontal tangent or secant, I mean. The secant is going to be horizontal. And this point, this line right here will be horizontal. So this is, this mean value theorem covers also Rolle's theorem. In case if f of b equals f of a. But this says also that these lines are parallel and their slopes are equal. 
the green and the red or you could say in short f prime at c the slope of the tangent at some point c will be the same slope as the slope of the secant now this mean very theorem has two results that we could apply and use here's the first one consequences of the mean value theorem here's the first one zero derivative implies constant function if f is differentiable and f prime is zero zero derivative at all points of an open interval i then f is a constant function how is that let me show you with examples f of x equals 5 f of x equals 7 pi 7 11 7 point 8 repeating what's f prime here zero what's f prime here zero what's f prime here zero you get the point let's go back and read this a little bit quick because we have an idea if f is differentiable and f prime equals zero f prime equals zero at all points of the interval then f is a constant yes if it's a constant it's going to give you zero if it's a zero it came from a constant now how does that come after the mean value theorem uh i'm going a little bit fast here but you could see it as notes and i'll slow down on examples i just want to give you enough ideas about Rolle's theorem and the mean value theorem uh let's let's move on f prime is zero okay uh a and b are distinct points of i so we are in the interval i and i'm looking at an interval inside from a to b so all the way from a to b it's zero because uh, we're using the word all right here by the mean value theorem there exists a point c between a and b such that the slope of the secant is the same as the slope of the uh, tangent but we are given that f prime is zero so we're going to use zero we are given that f prime is zero for all x so if we are within an interval inside from a to b we still could use it so instead of having this lengthy equation i just eliminated this and wrote zero but how can I solve this? Well, if a fraction equals zero, that means it's coming from the numerator. Or you could say multiply both sides by b minus a as long as b minus a does not equal to zero. And you'll have the following. Meaning, f of b equals f of a. And this is true for every pair of points a and b. We're not picking one on five or anything, we're just saying a and b. If f of b equals f of a for every pair of points in the interval, then f is a constant function on that interval. So as you could see, we're using the MVT. All right. So it's a basic concept. In math, we don't say like basic or common sense or uh, we consider steps and logic and theorems. So something to refer to if you need it one day to come back i do have enough examples so let's move on this is the first result let's take a look at the second result here we go functions with equal derivatives differ by a constant we're going to see this on the coming sections when we start integrating if two functions have the property that f prime equals g prime for all x of an open interval so the derivatives are the same for two functions then the difference between the original functions is a constant on i where c is a constant that is f and g differ by a constant that's kind of like a formally speaking what's going on here let's give you an example or some numbers look at these numbers 3x squared plus 7. What's the derivative? 6x. 7 is going to go away. 
3x squared plus 711. I'm, I'm using 711. It's one of my favorite numbers, as you could see, will give you the derivative 6x. 3x squared minus pi, pi will cancel or minus pi will cancel, 6x. 3x squared minus 5, 6x. 3x squared will give you 6x. f prime equals g prime on i as we're given right here now we're going to go through details we understand what's going on that means if i pull this to the other side i will get f prime minus g prime equals zero or i could say f minus g prime of x equals zero one of the rules for differentiation says that the derivative of the difference is the difference of the derivatives. We use this a lot for the sum. We say the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivative and so on. So we wrote it this way backwards. That means if the derivative of a function is zero, that means the function is a constant for all x and i. That is f and g differ by a constant. That is what's going on here. All right, let's take an example on the mean value theorem. f of x equals 2 square root of x. And we are on a closed interval from 0 to 4. Here's f of x. Here's the derivative. 2 square root of x will give you 1 over square root of x times 2, uh, or times 2 over 2 again and 2 cancels. This square root of x could be written as x to the power half. You bring the half down and you go like half minus 1 which is negative half. That's why it goes down and shows a square root. And the half that you bring down will take care of the 2. Trying in the coming problems because we are familiar with simplifying to skip steps of derivatives and move on to the main concept. The slope of the secant line is f of b minus f of a over b minus a, and this is b, and this is a. Plug in 4 and simplify. So we have 1. So the slope of the secant is 1. Keep that in mind. Now the derivative, we want the derivative to be 1. f prime of x, we want it to be 1, and we want to try to find where that x is that will give me f prime equals 1. So doing the math, I mean, look at this right here, that will give you x equals 1. Meaning, c is 1, and f prime at that c, which is 1, is equivalent to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Let me explain through a graph. Here's a graph. We're going with a 2 square root of x. That's the red one. And we're going from 0 to 4. If you plug in 4, square root of 4 is 2 times 2 is 4. So that's why it looks like a square right here. This is a secant between A and B. The slope is 1. And it looks like 45 degree. Somewhere here, we have a similar slope. It came up to be at 1. That's C right there. Another example, determine whether the Rolle's theorem applies to the following function on the given interval. Now, from now on, it's examples about Rolle's theorem and mean value theorem for the rest of the video. Let's take a look. If so, find the point or points guaranteed by the uh, to exist by Rolle's theorem. Here's the example x multiplied by x minus 1 to the second, we are going from a to b, which is 0 to 1. Number 1. Is it differentiable? Yes. This is a polynomial. It's differentiable. Number 2. f of a and f of b. This is my a. This is my b. Plug them in. You get 0. All right? So far, so good. Those are the conditions of Rolle's theorem. Rolle's theorem applies. Now, where is x 
between a and b between 0 and 1 such that we have a derivative equals to 0 that's the question how to do it you find the derivative and since this is written as a product of two things we're going to use the product rule as you can see so simplifying and you end up with the following and the following instead of reading and taking all your time you could see it and you could verify it it's simple algebra trying to save you some time and keep everything on one slide so you could go back and visit or take notes out of it what does this mean since we want x in 0 to 1 such that f prime of x equals this 0 right here uh, we are in Rolle's theorem so we want the uh, horizontal tangent as you could see x equals one third satisfies this condition and it comes from here this gives you one but one is not taken because one is b we want it to be inside a and b all right so one is eliminated and we take it from here which is one third and one third lives within uh, the open interval from zero to one let's take another example this time it's one minus absolute value of x we're going from negative one to one the function f is not differentiable at x equals 0 between negative 1 and 1. So Rolle's theorem does not apply. You know how the square root of x looks like. Sorry, the absolute value of x looks like. It's a V-shape. V-shape has a sharp edge. Shifted, uh, this is flipped upside down, shifted up one unit. You could graph it and see it. But because of the sharp edge, it's not differentiable there at zero so we can't move on another example here we have cosine 4x and we're going from pi over 8 to 3 pi over 8 f is differentiable we know cosine and sine are always differentiable f of a instead of reading pi over 8 i'm just saying quickly f of a equals f of b equals zero you can test them, take your time, and plug them in. We're still in Rolle's theorem. As long as we are equal the same, that means we have a horizontal secant. Rolle's theorem applies. Rolle's theorem applies. So let's move on. Now we're looking for x in the open interval with a horizontal tangent. Let's go back to the graph. The graph says a lot. That's why we're looking at horizontal tangent. So first we find the derivative. We know how to find the derivative of this. But I'm skipping steps. F prime equals negative 4 sine 4x. Four and when you set it equal to 0, because we want a horizontal tangent, it comes up to be x equals pi over 4. It satisfies the conclusion of Rolle's theorem another example f of x equals we're still on roll stream by the way 1 minus x to the power 2 thirds from negative 1 to 1 here's f prime skipping the steps you could just do it bring the 2 thirds down and take care of the rest f of x, f of x is not differentiable at x equals 0. Fractions, we always pay attention to the denominator. So Rolle's theorem does not apply. Let's take another example. Polynomial. Polynomials are nice to deal with with derivatives. Negative 1 to 3. Continuous, yes. Differentiable, yes. f of negative 1, a and b, f of b, Plug them in, take your time, you get zero, same level. That means horizontal secant we have. Rolle's theorem applies. Now we need the derivative and we need to look for an x inside such that we have horizontal tangent, meaning the f prime equals zero. 
So here is F prime. You could double check. Factor it. Set it equal to zero. You get two numbers. Take the one from here and five over three from here. But take a look at our interval, negative one to three. Negative one is on the is a itself. We can't take it. Five thirds is in between. We will take it, which means x equals five thirds satisfies the conclusion of the rolls theorem. Done. I think that's good enough for Rolls theorem. So I'm going to move on to the mean value theorem and cover some examples. Let's move on to talk about the mean value theorem. Consider the following function on the closed interval a to b. Determine whether the mean value theorem applies to f of x on the given interval a to b. If so, find the point or points that guaranteed to be to exist by the mean value theorem. Our first example is 7 minus x to the second from negative 1 to 2. Polynomial, they're, they're uh, good to deal with with differentiation, they're always continuous and differentiable. So f of x is continuous, f of x is differentiable on the open interval from negative 1 to 2. That means the mean value theorem applies. The average rate of change of f on negative 1 to 2 is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Do the math, it's negative 1. Now what we're doing, if you go back to the graph of the mean value theorem, this right here is the slope of the secant connecting the start point a and the end point b. So this is what we're doing. Now we have the slope of the secant negative 1. Now we need to walk in and find where it's going to happen as uh, we're going to get the same tangent uh, slope, a slope of a tangent that is also negative 1, a parallel line somewhere in between A and B. Let's take a look. So we wish to find C in negative 1 to 2 such that F prime at that C is also negative 1. You could see I'm circling them with the same color and so on to point where I'm getting the negative one from. Now f of x equals 7 minus x square. So by finding derivatives that means you're looking at slopes of tangents. So we're going to find the derivative which is minus 2x. Set it equal to negative 1 because we want the derivatives to be equal to negative 1. Derivatives mean slopes. We want the slope to be negative 1. And we need to find where is that going to happen. Doing the math, it's 1 half. And I believe 1 half lives between negative 1 and 2 in this open interval. So yes, that is our C, 1 half. I'm going a little bit fast, but I'm keeping everything on one slide so you could pause and look at it and take some notes if you want. Here's another example. This one is a piecewise function and it's defined from negative 1 to 1. But look what happens. Right between negative 1 and 1, there's a piece on the left of 0 and a piece on the right side of 0, including 0. We're still looking at the mean value theorem. Well, the mean value theorem talks about that the function has to be continuous and differentiable, but this function is not differentiable at zero, the location that's going to jump from one part to the other part. Why is that? If you remember the formal way, the limit as you approach zero from the right, you are greater than zero, so you're walking on this one, is one. The limit as you approach zero from the left is negative 2. I'm not reading this. I'm trying to save you some time. Or differently, you could say the following. If you are on the right of 0, you're walking on this line. Now, what's the derivative of x? It's 1, right there. If you are to the left of 0, 
what's the derivative of minus 2x? Because that's what belongs to you. It's negative 2. Right there. But those are not the same. The derivative from the right and the derivative from the left are not the same. So we say f is not differentiable. Which means we cannot use what the mean value theorem says. The mean value theorem does not apply here. Another example. Lin 2x from 1 to e. f of x is continuous. Log functions, natural log. f of x is differentiable. Yes. f prime is 1 over 2x times 2, which is 1 over x. So the mean value applies. The mean value theorem. Now why this is like this, I'll remind you. Think about lin without 2x, just x. What's the derivative of lin x? It's 1 over x. If this is a u substitution, the, it's going to be uh, lin u. And the derivative of lin u is 1 over u times u prime. And that's what I'm doing. I'm using uh, Shane rule. So we have 1 over x. All right. Now mean value theorem talks about one more time. The slope of the secant connecting the end point and the start point will equal a slope of a tangent somewhere in between. So what's the slope of the secant? The average rate of change of f from a to b from 1 to e is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Why this looks like this? I could skip it, but let me just talk about it so quick. f of e means you plug in e here. That's len 2 times e, which means len 2 plus len e. I'll remind you one more time in a different way. Log x times y, log xy, will equal log x plus log y. That's part of the rules uh, identities for log. So we're applying it right here. The len of a product will be len of the first plus len of the second. And f of 1, just plug in 1 here, that's len 2 times 1, which is just len 2. With a minus sign, that's going to cancel. And you end up with len e over e minus 1. But what's len e? Len e is 1. Base e, e to the power what equals e itself? It's 1. All right, so this is the slope of the secant that connects the start point and the end point. We wish to find C in the inner, in the inside the interval, such that F prime, which is slope of the tangent, is equivalent to this. And that's what I have. You could call it C, you could call it X, but we're going to call it C at the end either way. 1 over X, that's the derivative of our function, I'm boxing it the same way to tell you where I got it from. But we want to call it C because that's what we're looking for. Flip this, flip this to read C clearly. C equals E minus 1. All right. Approximate to 1.71828. Uh, that should do it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thank you.